So pulmonary circulation, all the blood from the heart, from the right side of the heart, goes to the lungs. Okay. Now, they're going to go into the pulmonary arteries from the right side of the heart. And then these arteries are going to branch out. As you can see, they follow, They basically trace the, the bronchi. So you see here on the right side, these red stuff. It looks pretty much like how the bronchi look like because they're basically following the bronchi. You're going to see the bronchi branch out. These, going to, these guys are going to branch out smaller and smaller and smaller, just like the bronchi branch out the bronchioles. And eventually they're going to branch out so small that they're going to branch out into the alveoli. And that's where they're going to form their, their pulmonary capillary beds. They form a dense network surrounding the alveoli. So that's going to op optimize gas exchange between the alveoli and the blood vessels. Um, so normally this pulmonary circulation is low resistance and high compliance. So that's more blood go through the lungs, helps it pass through easily and get a lot of, uh, get a lot of oxygen, get rid of that carbon dioxide. Now we still need to regulate blood flow. And so the key determinant for regulation of blood flow here is oxygen levels of the alve alveoli. So let me say, let's say that this alveoli here has low oxygen, let's see on the right. Low oxygen. What happens to these blood vessels? You're gonna get. Are they gonna get bit? Are they gonna dilate or vasoconstrict? All right. Low oxygen in these alveoli is gonna cause vasoconstriction. Now, I think many people would have thought vasodilation because that's what normally happens in the rest of the body. You get low oxygen in, the, in like the heart. You get vasodilation. You get low, low oxygenation pretty much anywhere, and you get vasodilation. This is the only part of the body where the opposite happens where low oxygen will cause a vasal constriction. A hypoxic region will get vasal constriction. And the reason why we do this, excuse me, is to redirect deoxygenated blood. We want to get it away from poorly ventilated areas of the lung to, to better ventilated areas of the lung. So if this place is low oxygen, why would you send blood here? It doesn't make sense because you're not going to get any really good blood, gas exchange. So you're just wasting all that, all, that, um, all that blood that could be sent somewhere else to get some oxygen. So when you do this basic constriction of hypoxic areas in the lung, you get better gas exchange. Okay, now pulmonary vascular resistance, this is a throwback to the cardiac lectures. But this is basically pulmonary artery pressure minus left atrial pressure. You divide this all by the cardiac output. Just remember that um, we had the definition of, oops, Let's see. Remember that resistance we said equals to change in pressure over cardiac output. Okay, and because that was just a rearrangement of the other, the other equation was cardiac output equals to delta P over R. So now we have this, and change in pressure is basically arterial pressure minus left atrial pressure, which is pretty much the pressure at the end, like after all, at the end of it, pulmonary veins flow into the left atrium. Okay. And the other way we can calculate it is the same equation that we see before. 8 times this this little cause this little what is it signal? It's not a signal, a little symbol here. It stands for viscosity times length over pi r to the fourth. And that's the equation. Same for air always to the determine resistance. Okay, now we're going to talk about pulmonary gas exchange a little more. The way the gas transfers, so we've talked a lot about it, but how does it actually work? The way it works is gas transfer between the alveoli and the capillary walls is by simple diffusion. Simple as that. Okay. We have a nice equation here where diffusion will depend on the area, so the area of the walls of the capillary and the alveoli. And then you multiply that by the diffusion coefficient of a gas, or so how well that specific gas can cross these two, these two barriers. And then you multiply that by the difference in pressures between the gas in the alveoli and the capillary. So it's going to be the higher one minus the, it's, cause it's always going to go from high pressure to low pressure. Okay, and the difference is going to drive how fast it diffuses. Finally, the last factor here is the alveolar wall thickness. So obviously, the thicker the wall, the harder it is to diffuse. So all these factors will determine how fast a gas will diffuse across um, the alveoli and the capillaries. Now we can classify this gas exchange into perfusion or diffusion limited gas exchange. And it depends on which gas is being, um, being exchanged, equilibrating is being exchanged. 
We'll talk about perfusion limited first. Oxygen, CO2, and N2O are both are all perfusion limited. And what does this mean? Okay, first of all, we have this graph with partial pressures and length along the pulmonary capillary. So you see here that it's it's equilibrating, so the partial pressure is increasing, increasing as you go down this pulmonary capillary here. As you go this way, it's diffusing. And in a perfusion limited gas, it's going to completely diffuse, it's going to completely equilibrate before you reach the end of this capillary. You see it, it's done it very quickly here. Very early on, it's completely equilibrated. So now they have same levels of of the gas in both sides, same partial pressures in both the capillary and the alveoli. This is perfusion limited. In a diffusion limited situation here, you see that the gas never fully equilibrates even at the end of the capillary. Okay, and that's true for oxygen and diseased lungs and carbon monoxide. These are both diffusion limited. So, wh why do we call this perfusion limited? Why do we call this that? Because the amount of gas that can actually that you can equilibrate will depend on how much how fast the the blood is is going through. How much blood are you getting through determines how much gas is going to be equilibrated. Because obviously it's it's not about the time here because it's going to do it so early on. So the more blood you get into get through these alveoli, the more gas gets exchanged. In this case, this diffusion limited thing. The problem here is not how fast the blood goes. Because the faster it goes, that means you have less time to diffuse. It's how, it's pretty much, there's just something wrong with the barrier. So you need more time or something because otherwise it's not going to fully diffuse. Okay, now we go to ventilation perfusion. So ventilation means how much ox, how much gas is getting sent to the alveoli. Perfusion is how much blood is sent to the pulmonary capillaries, perfusing these alveoli. Now we see in this diagram here, First, let's focus on this on this one on the left. This is representing the perfusion of the lung. And we see at the top, we see there's very low perfusion. At the bottom, we have very high perfusion. Okay, and we have these numbers here. These are basically my little, my, they represent a rough idea of, how, of a ratio of how much blood is going to each, to each part. And because of gravity, what happens? Gravity causes blood to go down. So that's why the bottom of the lung has a lot more blood than the top of the lung. And I'm gonna give you a rough, rough estimate. It's about nine times more. This is just this is just so you get an idea. It's, it's not um, scientifically proven. It's not from any studies. Just give an idea that this one, the bottom gets a lot more than the top. Now, if you look here on the, on the right side, we see we're looking at ventilation now. We're looking at how much oxygen gets to the alveoli at the top of the lung and the bottom of the lung. And you see here that even though both of these have low, ventila low ventilation, low perfusion, you see that the ventilation here relative to the perfusion is better. Okay, it's about three times better than the perfusion at the top. If you look at the bottom, you see that again the bottom gets more air than the top of the lungs. However, even when you compare when you compare this to the to the amount of blood that's going to the bottom of the lungs, you see that we have less air going to the bottom of the lungs than the amount of blood. And the way we look at this, we, we actually just pretty much just use a ratio. And this is the VQ. Okay, this is the VQ ratio. Ventilation perfusion. Q stands for perfusion. The VQ ratio. So as you see here, the ratio of ventilation to perfusion is 3 to 1 at the top at the top of the lung. So there's more air, more oxygen, more gas than blood. That means that a lot of these alveoli here that are getting oxygen or blood or, or gas are not getting blood. So they're just hanging out. These uh, these alveoli are just hanging out. The, the air and the alveoli are hanging out. And they're not equi equilibrating at all. So it's, this is what we said was that, that wasted space, that dead space, that that anatomical dead space. Because it's air in the lung, alveoli that's not getting perfused. Now if you look at the bottom of the lung, you see this ratio changes. And the ratio now is, I said 6 to 9, but this is, it's pretty much 0, 0 0.6. Okay, so we see that there is l there is less ventilation. There's more blood going to the bottom of these lungs than there is air. So there's going to be blood that's going to be going around alveoli, but there's no there's not enough gas to go into the blood vessels. So there's more blood than gas, than gas, and some of this blood is going to come away poorly oxygenated. And so that's the ventilation perfusion. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more about this, a little bit more about this later. It's an important concept.